So welcome to this video about exoplanets and we're going to have a look at how we calculate the radius of a transiting exoplanet. So firstly, we've discovered thousands of exoplanets in the last few years. If you have a look at this plot, you can see that the number of exoplanets that have been discovered over the last 10 years has seen an explosion. Now you can see the different colours there. So the different colour on the plot represents the method in which they were discovered. So green is for transit, which is the one we're interested in for this video. Uh, red is radial velocity, so that's where we're using the Doppler shift basically to, to discover an exoplanets. But you can see most have been discovered from the transit method. So just a recap of what the transit method is. It's when a planet passes in front of its star and we see that as the star getting dimmer. So it blocks out some of the light and then we can detect an exoplanet that way. But how do we actually get the radius of the planet just by looking at that transit? Because that's the only information we have is that U-shaped dip in brightness, um, unless it's accompanied with other measurements. But mostly we might just have that. So how do we get that radius? Well, firstly, let's have a look at some information with regards to the exoplanets. If you go to the exoplanet archive, you can get lots of plots that give you the radiuses of the exoplanets, the masses, the orbital period, things like that. So this has all of the current known information about exoplanets as well as candidates and you can generate plots that are already made so you've got pre-generated plots at the bottom or you can have a look at the data and create your own plots so when we do that we've got orbital period against the mass of the planet and jupiter masses and you've got quite a range there but note that a lot of your planets are green which is the transit method again and they're also to the left and upper part of the plot which basically means large planets close to their stars are easy to find for obvious reasons so and then we we can do the orbital period against the radius of the actual exoplanet but how do we actually get that radius and that's what we're going to have a look at in a minute so we've got the orbital period and then we have the radius and we can check out the orbital period in another video so it's fairly straightforward so we have the the radius of the star and the radius of the planet and it's basically just the area of those um, subtracted and whatever you're left over with. Or that's how we could basically get the radius of the, of the exoplanet. So on the equation there, you've got delta F, which is your change in flux or brightness of the star. So if the star dims down by 3%, then that is going to be our um, delta F, which would be 0 0.03. And that would equal the square, the radius of the exoplanet over the square of the radius of the star and we can rearrange that for the radius of the planet and there we are we have the radius of the planet but i should note that we need we do need to have the radius of the star in order to do that but the radius of the star can be calculated using other methods so a lot of the time that information would already be available once you've detected a planet so if we rearrange for the radius of the planet we get this at the bottom here so your radius of the planet is equal to the radius of the star times the square root of the change in brightness of the star. Now, the top equation is an, it approximately equals that. And the reason for that is there are better ways or better equations that will give you a more accurate picture of the radius of the planet because the planet actually is closer to us than the star. Um, but it gives you a good approximation really for what we want to do. So we can use an example to see how this works and look at the actual published radius of the planet. So if we take WASP 80b, so this is a planet discovered around a star that's about 57% the size or the radius of the sun. So it's 0 0.57 times the radius of the sun. And you've got the transit there. So this is taken from the scientific paper where it was, the information of the planet was published. And from the top transit there, you've got approximately 0.03 for your change in brightness of the star, the change in flux. So it goes from 1 down to about 0.97. So if we put that into the equation, we should find that the planet is almost 10% the radius of the sun, or put it into terms of Jupiter radiuses, then it's about 0.96 times the radius of Jupiter. So it's pretty close to being Jupiter size. And therefore, it's fairly easy to determine that this is a gas giant. But we can then check that with the published scientific paper. And in the abstract right at the top, 
you have 0.95 for the radius of wasp ATB, which is quite close to what we did just by looking at the plot and putting it into that equation there. So thank you for watching.